it's really yeah. cool. Um, well, for me, it was my first trip, and I was like grade nine, like mad young. I was super like psyched. I was on the show and super nervous about I'm going on the trip with like Degrassi cast. It was a big deal. I, didn't, I wasn't one of you guys yet, so it was kind of, I guess, the process of becoming a bit of a family. Um, yeah. Uh, I think you captured it pretty nicely there. I mean, like, to say one thing, it would be almost impossible for me, but just sort of like seeing how everyone sort of got along and as opposed to the first trip it was a group it was the biggest group I think. This year. Unless this this year did this year beat that. Yeah. This trip was the biggest group of uh <laughs> nice. Degrassi cast together and so you know I was thinking before that maybe it won't be like that sort of nice small dynamic we had when we went to Kenya. But it but it was its own thing. It was it was amazing. Yeah, I still haven't forgotten also, like, the, uh, the like, cultural experience in every trip was so different and distinct. And, like, I think this one, what I always remember is, like, all the beautiful colors. Like, you saw what people wore in the, in the villages, and it was, like, uh, really just beautiful visually. We also ate guinea pigs, which you don't see in this documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we, you know, that definitely stands out in my head. Oh, oh yeah, like, it's not good cheese. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Do any of you have questions that you'd like to ask? Yes. Um, I know that most of you went to India. So what did you learn in India, um, learn in Ecuador that you didn't learn in India? Yeah, it was cold in India. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll say this. In India, we were in one spot for most of it, right? Yeah, in Kenya as well. In Ecuador, we moved around, so we got to see uh, sort of keto, which is like very European kind of look, and then we were uh, obviously at the village, and then afterwards we went to the cloud forest, which oh, is like cool. incredible. We saw toucans and hummingbirds and everything, and uh, lots of nasty bugs. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was kind of nice to get to see. Oh my god, my flies down. <laughs> <laughs> see how what we had done two years ago uh, changed. Yeah. And, you know, and the mural is still good. It's got like a gold tint now. <laughs> the wall isn't white, it's gold. And, uh, and I got to you know, experience that cold again that I never forgot. It's not as bad as this right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, and, and I got to see that they've, uh, they've built a high school now, the first high school in that community. Yeah, I was standing like right across from where we did the mural, so I mean that community is just seeing a lot of change. And I'm sure that if I were to go back in two years again, it would just be uh, a lot of other things that will have changed. It will be great to see. Yeah, yeah it's the. This is a man that doesn't address any question at all. But it's, cool. <laughs> it's, cool. it's cool that like to see like I, like we all know maybe we don't, but we know <laughs> Read the Children's uh, like, kind of model with like alternative income, health care, uh, clean water. Um, and, and obviously, you know, brick by brick, like to build a school. But then you get to, like in Kenya, I think the whole thing is fully functional. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's like there are maybe a few communities that are fully functional in all of those um, aspects. And like it should happen probably, like, sounds like it's going to happen soon in Ecuador. It's cool that, like, the whole, the whole foundation of British children is happening like, in different places. Like, we're, but like we were hoping. And it's 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 within our lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to add on that, actually, I was just in the same community, San Miguel, um, in December, and we were able to build like a water station. So that was just kind of a great thing. Right, right by the uh, old high school, or the new high school, sorry, we were able to build a, you know, a water station where people can come wash their hands. Um, we saw them in the video washing the bowl. Um, so now they're kind of developing on that and learning. So exactly like you say, all the four pillars are kind of coming all together now. So it's really cool. The high school thing's cool too because like it makes me think that the kids that we met while we were there exactly, won't yeah. have to drop out at a certain point. Like they can keep going. Yeah, through. that's a great point. I mean, a lot of a lot of these kids are just stopping after kind of grade six, grade seven, and they're not getting any more education. So to have that opportunity to actually go further is something that's brand new for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have another question. Uh, where did you guys stay when you guys went to Ecuador? Like, a Forty-five minute drive. 
It was like a... Yes. Yeah, it does. So the Hacienda is like a kind of an old system built in from when the Spanish kind of took over um, Ecuador when they came and conquered the land. Um, so they were able to, you know, we, we work with the government now um, in Ecuador who actually owns the Hacienda and we stay there. We have a great relationship with them and, and it's actually like 45 minutes away from San Miguel. Uh, so it's really, really cool. There's, you know, it's fully functional. There's beds and there's, you know, a full kitchen and then we have some great ladies that work there. And, I mean, they have their own farms and, and everything there, so it's, it's really neat. Uh, and then in Quito, we obviously we just stayed at a hotel that's uh, in the old part of the city. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, did you like um, learn like a, like a, like something? Not something. Something like you know how they teach you new stuff. Like let's say like songs or something. Did you learn any like anything like that? Sort of like their tradition or do, something yeah, like that. that yeah. Regularly, yeah. Every day they sort of bring you. Uh, through to somewhere where you can sort of learn how people do a certain thing. So this, this time when I went around, we learned about, uh, we had a whole bunch of stations about, uh, there was like knitting was one station, there was uh, shearing uh, sheep's wool, um, and I mean like, but everything, every, they turn everything into an experience. So they're there, they take care of you, and everything you see relates. It's like someone sort of sat down and planned like every little thing you do, but it doesn't seem like, you know, you're in, you're in, someone's controlling or pulling the strings. It's very like, it's very natural, and you're always learning something. We had Spanish lessons. Uh... Yeah, and you usually get those like uh, like an opening ceremony and sort of like a, a goodbye ceremony as well, where you get to see sort of like local dance and music. Yeah, like the inauguration. That, that dance some guinea pig. <laughs> some context on the guinea pig. <laughs> guinea pig is actually like a really cultural dish there. It's kind of like when we have turkey here, uh, a big meal or something that's special. So. We like to do that with all the groups that go down. And did you guys get to kind of barter for it in the market? We did barter, yeah. Did, did yes. you get the guinea yes. pigs from the market, though? Mm -hmm. No. Yes. No? Yeah. Well, you did? Oh, second time. Second time. Second time. Okay. Yeah. Like the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Second time. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes with our groups, we can actually get them ourselves. We go with uh, our group down to the market that you were seeing there. Um, and we can let the groups kind of bid barter for them, and we get to bring them back. Oh, and. Um, and have them. It's kind of, it's a really big delicacy there, so um, it's a pretty cool kind of cultural experience that definitely doesn't happen here. <laughs> but I mean, even I don't, I don't personally like it, but you know, I try it, and, and that's all that you can do. At least you see you try it. So yeah. jump in. <laughs> Any other last questions? Okay. Uh, I see you. You're like not too sure here. Go. Um, What's what? What's it's? I know it's a fun trip overall, but what's one of like the most memorable fun things that you did on the trip? I didn't actually get the paint wrong. It was uh, Dave, our facilitator. Snuck out of the room. You know why he's not here? Because yeah. He just doesn't want this question to be asked. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was really dark. Like I don't know how they like flipped it in the documentary, but like it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> and, so we were painting all day, and then it got dark, so then we couldn't really tell the difference. It was like, <laughs> who can be like, no, 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 it's not the orange we were using all day, because it was dark. So then I go to Dave, I'm like, Dave, is this, uh, is this the color? And Dave's like, yeah, yeah, it's the color. And I'm like, okay, sure, yeah, yeah. So we go around, we paint it, and then Dave comes around, and he's like, well, it's not the color. <laughs> and I mean, although it's like we got, we got like demoted back to the paintbrushes, we couldn't use the rollers anymore, that was still a lot of, the whole thing was fun, not that part, but the whole thing. That's fine. Do you still feel guilty? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Settle it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys? Fun parts. Um. I don't know. Don't feel so standing up. Oh no. bunk beds where me and Dama were sleeping. And so like I've been sleeping in these bunk beds for a while and we were both sleeping in the top bunks. And I just thought I deeded everything. Deed spray, I deed sprayed everything so far. I haven't deed sprayed my bed yet. So I just pulled the mattress out like from the wall to like spray in there. And I look in and there's like a there's this 
There was a spider in there. And it was red. It was a red spider. It was spider that spider man. It was that one. It was that one. And I sprayed it with the deep and it was like, like moved a little bit. And then and then I got worried and I was begging Dalmar to like come and kill it. And he was tired because like we were so high up and he was lazy. And finally, like I'm not turning off the light in this room. He wants to go to sleep. So he finally gets off the bed and just shakes my bed. Now this thing fell down. My suitcase is on the bottom bed. Oh. I don't know where this spider's gone. I'm spraying like all over. I can't sleep. So at one point, like the light stayed on the whole night. Like, if this is the space in between our two beds, I'm just like leaning and looking like half, like, half looking for the spider with a, with a flashlight. Oh, I did turn off the light. Half looking for the spider with a flashlight. But you don't really want to find it. No, I don't want to find it. Is that a woman? Is that a woman? I'm going to be like, oh no. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not touching anything for very long. Like, I'm moving centimeters at a time. <laughs> And then I like fell asleep standing up like this, leaving me wow. Someone came in in the morning and just like woke me up. Oh, funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, just like wake up calls, remember? Yes. The... Every day someone else had to go wake someone. <sighs> remember Judy Joe? Oh yeah, that was Judy, the best. <laughs> Judy, who was in the documentary, she uh, played Leia on the show. She was like <laughs> notorious for when you wake up. She's not <laughs> very rough, but she, I don't even want to say what she said because it was just like full of swear words. She'd just be like, Rah! and like any other time you talk to her, she's the most like sweet, Serene. just like very calm. But in the morning, <laughs> there's a companion story. There's the there's us in Kenya. So oh, when we first went to Kenya, this is where the foundations of me and Dalmar's friendship. We walk into this. Everybody got tense. Right? But everybody's tent was closed. Yes. And we had tents. Oh, but I it was bust open my the whole too. day. Mm -hmm. It was open oh, waiting for us. Hello, Delmar just, and Raymond. It was nighttime. <laughs> yeah. and we're walking in and there's like slug bugs oh, just chilling. Yeah. In there's our stick room. bugs too. Like and he's in the document. There's like one of the stick bugs. No, it's on the stick <laughs> But you know who they got to come and take the bug away that time? Craig, Craig Kielberger. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't busy. <laughs> I asked him. They told me that there was a helicopter on the on the premise that would take us away in case of anything. <laughs> that was an emergency. <laughs> I wanted to go. Home. Nice. I'm, not, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying Craig's like, what's the problem here, guys? We tried to pick the thing up off the tent and it just stuck, like it clung oh, off. Oh, we never let you hear the end of that. When you couldn't pull the bug off, that's when it was like, we're not crazy. You see, even someone big can't pull this bug off. <laughs> but suffice to say, I mean, yeah, the bugs, the bugs are there. They're not the end of the world. But just for me and Randy. <laughs> of course not. That's part of the experience. Right? Part of the experience. You've got to just embrace it. Awesome. Well, there, were, there weren't any. All right, one last question in the no, back. That's an idea. Oh, that's good. Do you keep in touch with anybody that you met while you were away? And if so, how do you do that? Like, what? Did you meet anybody here? My, we, my girlfriend uh, <laughs> went on a trip to Kenya, I think right after me. And she still keeps in touch with a couple of the Kenyan uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, like Peter. And Absolutely, yeah. There, it's funny how Facebook has found its way around the world to places that you wouldn't even imagine. I know I've been to Kenya twice now, and there's a number of my participants who have remained in touch with people uh, via the internet. Uh, they don't have access to Facebook like we would hear every day or maybe even every hour or minute, like some of you here, as I imagine. Uh, but that, that has served us away. There's also another girl that was on one of my trips to Kenya who uh, she mails the man that, or the young boy, sorry. Uh, we stayed on this one of the mama's properties, and uh, she had a number of uh, goat and cattle, and every morning one of her young sons would come out and take care of it, and she's remained in touch via mail. So the just old-fashioned writing letters pen pal style. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So these guys are sticking around for a little bit longer.